Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. I'm back today with a little experimentation video. I'm going to test out the OEM charging system on my rig for my lithium batteries. Now what I'm going to do here, I don't advise anybody taking stuff apart like this. It's dangerous. You can uh, harm your rig, catch fire, electrocute yourself, all that good stuff. So up front I'm doing it but I don't advise anybody to do it so you've you've been warned if you start taking your your rig apart like this anyway what I got here right down there is my OEM charge converter so that's basically the battery charger for the rig um, it charges the the battery which is actually located at the front of my fifth wheel this charger is actually located underneath my stove sort of towards the rear of the rig. So the cabling that goes from this charger out to my batteries runs, I would estimate, anywhere from 25 to 30 feet. And it's not the, the most heavy gauge cable. Um, if you look down, I'll just zoom in here. It's that black cable there. I think maybe it's a six gauge. What happens because of that is you get quite a bit of voltage drop across that by the time it gets to the batteries. So this is supposed to be a smart charger. It's a multiple stage charger designed for lead acid batteries. And uh, a lead acid battery usually charges in multiple phases. At first it will take a lot of, uh, a lot of electricity or a current amperage in its initial phase. They call the bulk phase. And chargers like this are supposed to be able to provide 14.4 volts in that phase. Um, after that, the battery starts to accept less current and goes into an absorption phase and it switches to about 13.6 volts. And then it starts, uh, at the end it goes to a float stage and you get about 13.2 volts. So overall though, with this charger, I only ever saw, I rarely saw it in bulk phase where it would provide all of its current. It's a 55 amp charger but I rarely ever saw anywhere near that. Usually I would measure the voltage at 13.6 and I would be getting anywhere from 10 to 25 amps of charge out of it. So that's adequate usually for just a single battery in most RVs. That's sort of what they're designed for. But when you uh, start to install larger battery banks, like when I switched to four big golf cart batteries, it became kind of very inadequate. And that's what led me to install this IntelliPower charger. Now, because I was going to be using it off-grid, I installed this IntelliPower charger up by my battery bank. So it was very close. Then I wouldn't have that long cable uh, for the power to go through, and I wouldn't get voltage drop. So this performed really well, and I would, I would be able to get a pretty good charge through it. And I ended up, for convenience, putting a receptacle at the front of the rig so I could just plug my generator straight into it. <clears throat> In the meantime, I kept this OEM one, so when we're on full hookups, it was adequate because we also have solar power, which is a whole different ball game. But the solar power also charges the batteries at the same time, and you can have both of them charging the power converter and the solar. So basically, this became my off-grid charger for when I was doing generator charging. So next I switched to a lithium. So you remember last summer I installed three of the Lion Energy lithium batteries. Now I found out I didn't have to actually switch over to a lithium specific charger, although that's the recommended thing for your charge converter. Mostly because my solar power, my solar controller, I could adjust it so I would give the lithium the charge voltage they wanted. Now the lithium batteries usually want between 14.2 to 14.6. I like to charge at about 14.4 and that charges them up beautifully. So on this particular model, even though it's made for lead acid charging, it had this little pendant here and I could push a button and override that, override the, the charging algorithm for lead acid and they would put out 14.4. They call it a boost mode. And I found it would charge my lithium no problem, right to full. I would get around 50 or 54 amps of charge. So that worked out great for me. I didn't have to replace my uh, my my chargers at all. So because I had the solar and that for when I used the generator. 
But a lot of people have asked me about installing lithium, whether they're going to have to change their chargers or not. Probably you're going to have to. But if you do have one of these type of chargers with the manual override, you may get away with not buying a lithium specific charger like I did, especially if you have a lot of solar. So long story short is I'm going to try this charger in this position and see if it can do the job from this position as well. Because a lot of people might have this type of charger located in their rig in the OEM position, <clears throat> but they might have this little charge pendant or they might be able to buy it or they might be able to buy an add-on. I think IOTA is, a, is another charge company that sells a lithium add-on to theirs. So I just wanted to do a test and see if uh, it would work in this position. Now we've been on full hookups here for a good month and a half and what I've done is I've disconnected my solar and I've been just letting the OEM charger charge my lithium batteries. And what happens, and this is usually what happens, is I charge them up full and put them in there at 100% charge and then I just let this charger go. And it actually the charge capacity they drop down to around 59% capacity and they've held like that for weeks. So what happens, I think, is this uh, this uh, charger gets tricked into thinking the lithiums are full and it goes into a float mode and just floats them at 13.2. But that's not enough voltage to charge the lithium battery, so they just kind of stay like that, which is fine. Lithium doesn't need to be recharged to 100%, and actually uh, they sit better at a lower capacity anyway. It's less less hard on them and I've read that they last longer if you don't have them constantly sitting at full charge. Anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap in the IntelliPower in place of this temporarily and we'll see if the IntelliPower is capable of charging it especially when I when I push this button here. So I'll pull this, put this back in and I'll temporarily wire in the IntelliPower. Right now you can see we're not putting out any current at all even though the batteries are at 59% capacity, they're not charging at all. They're just sitting in trickle float mode. Okay, so I've disabled the OEM charge converter by just turning off the breaker that supplies the AC power to it. And I've gone and spliced in the IntelliPower charge converter. Now I'm just going to plug its AC in. I've got a voltage of 13.13, no current is, of course, because Nothing's charging, so we'll plug that in. There we go. Voltage has come up to 13.6, and it's actually charging. So 17 and a half amps are now being charged. And that's just the difference between this quality charge converter versus the OEM one. The OEM one is a, a WFCO. Uh, 8955 I think it's supposed to be a 55 amp charger this is a 60 amp charger I think it's a PD 9260 so we're getting around 17 amps of charge let's hit the boost so this will override the lead acid charging algorithm and it'll just give it a constant boost voltage there we go I could hear it speed up and now we have about 40.7 amps going in. And you can see we're at 13.3 volts, or 14.32 volts. So voltage came up, and of course the, the current came up. Now the position that I put that charger in, in the front battery bay, I don't have that very long uh, cable where I would lose some power through that. I have a, a pretty uh, heavy cable. 4 gauge straight in only about 2 feet from my batteries so I tend to see around uh, 50 amps or so. So what I'm going to do is uh, let that charge and see if it will uh, bring it back to a full capacity which will be interesting for folks. So the battery is up to 73% capacity now. We've been at 13.6 at the battery. It's still 14.3 at the charger. And it's been pretty steady, right around 30, 32 amps, pretty solid there. So I'll continue on, see if we can get up to 100%.
Okay, after about five hours, the voltage is starting to go up now, 14.4, and my current is down to 20 amps. Let's just go check the trimetric, see what we're at. Yeah, we're showing 100% charge. 13.9. Yeah, you can see the current's dropping. So that's what happens when the batteries get right to uh, their full charge. Then the, the BMS in there starts to cut off the current. So I'll call that a full charge. Well, there you go. I hope that added a bit of info for you if you're shopping around for lithium and thinking of uh, replacing the lead acid batteries with lithium in your trailer. Um, you can see the the OEM chargers probably not going to do a very good job. In my experience, it's going to only partially charge your batteries. Now, of course, if you're getting lithium batteries, you usually also have solar, and the solar is going to be set so that it can charge it. And the the OEM charge converter, you know, the one tucked in there is just going to kind of augment it. But if you're off grid and you want to use a generator, or you don't have solar then you're definitely going to need to improve your charging to get the full capacity out of your lithium batteries. Now this sort of proves that uh, this one with the manual override switch does a pretty decent job of charging the, the batteries right up to 100%. Um, so what you could, if you had something like that, you could stay with it. Or, you know, the best thing is to invest in a, a dedicated lithium charge converter. There's several on the market. This brand here, IntelliPower, makes one. Also, IOTA has one with a with a lithium add-on. Anyway, till next time, Bray from LoveYourRV.com. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers.